Hello, Professor Gruen here, and I've actually revised my office a little bit, and I finally got the bookshelves in that I've been hoping for for quite a while. So um, this is definitely going to be a lot, a lot help, a lot more helpful to me to be able to have my books within easy reach. Speaking of which, oh, we've got to get our textbook right now. Here it is. We're working with Murex jQuery, second edition. Uh, let's turn to chapter seven, and that's on page 223. And if you haven't figured it out by now, I am just having a little bit too much fun with my new toy. Um, <clears throat> having a little too much fun with my new toy called um, Sparko Cam, which basically allows me to um, do green screen. I actually have a green screen cloth set up behind me, and with that, I'm able to then put an image behind me as a background and overlay that and then actually make the video. It's actually pretty cool. It didn't cost that much. Uh, if we want, we could uh, take a quick go outside, take a look how it looks out at night tonight. Or maybe um, I'm actually having work done on my office and this is the office that I hope to be in soon. If uh, Donald Trump doesn't make it, then maybe I'll be able to. Um, yeah, I think I'd look good in that chair, don't you? OK, um, we digress too much, but um, it is kind of fun. It's nice to be able to have technology to use and um, have some fun with. OK, jQuery plugins, chapter seven. This chapter is another one of those chapters where, quite honestly, I don't have a lot to do or show you. The chapter is only 24 pages long. It lays things out really well. And the clear lesson in it is there is stuff out there to use that makes our life easier. So let's take a look and let's just kind of go through the slides real quick and then we'll go through the demos that are um, that, that are in the um, the student apps resources folders. Um, the objectives use any of these plugins to enhance a web page lightbox box slider cycle two. Give the specifications for a jQuery test for which there is a useful plugin and find and use the plugin to do the task. So that's the key. The key is um, being able to say, I need a plugin that does this and then find it. And quite honestly, there's a million of them out there. And, um, and then give the specifications for a plugin and create it. I'm not worried about that um, for for you. A couple of you, I think there is an example in the chapter that walks you through creating a simple plugin, but even that plugin's been done. We're going to learn some of the standards, learn describe some of the terms in 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 how to find a plugin. The hardest part that I have found in using plugins that are out there, quite honestly, are is um, some plugins are well documented and others aren't. And what you need to do is bring in, download the plugin, and make it work simply and basically. Strip it down to the bare minimum to get it to do what you want, and take that minimum product and put it into your web page. So here's an example Google plugin for form validation. In most cases, jQuery UI has all the form validation that you need. However, you can see jQuerySQLValidation.org has got a lot more <coughs> um, form validations. If you need something uh, even more technical, more detailed than what jQuery UI offers, jQuerySQLValidation.org, FormValidation.iu. So these are again libraries that become available to you that are um, out there on the web. All of the 
URLs that are listed in this PowerPoint, I'm going to add to our student resources, our course resources page. So here's some websites where you can find various plugins. Uh, display images, I'll tell you Lightbox, and I've used Fancybox. I think I played with Colorbox once, but these are some neat little plugins that are available. Download, read the documentation, play with it by, by itself, and then um, go from there. Okay, that gets us to 226, 227. We're still on 220. Box Slider is probably one of the most commonly used plugins, and J Carousel. Galleria looks like a really fun plugin to use as well for um, image galleries. And um, if you need a nice professional way to look at, at your images. Text layout. Haven't played too much with, with these, but <clears throat> there might be some interesting uh, columnizer I've seen in use a couple of times, but haven't played with much of that. Uh, looking at those, seeing what they do and seeing if they'll meet your needs can be a, a positive thing. More plugins for forms. There's tons of those out there. Interface design plugins. So the WOW I have used and, um, and jQuery UI I have used. I've not used Isotope and I've not used uh, Weijimo. And jQuery Mobile, I actually have an application running at work that I used the jQuery Mobile plugin, and it really gives a website just a pure mobile app look and feel. And uh, if you want to create something that's really can be run and used on on a mobile device easily, this uh, jQuery Mobile plugin is very simple to pick up and very simple to use. Okay, that puts us how to use any plugin on page 228. 229. Step number one, once you've found a plugin that you think you like, study the documentation for the plugin. A lot of times studying the documentation for the plugin actually means right clicking and looking at how they used it. Get the URLs for the plugin files that are available, download the files, save them to a folder on your website. Now what I recommend is actually to save them to a folder and then make a copy of them to another folder. Have two versions of it. One version is your original source code files that you just don't touch at all. Because what you want to do is you don't want to download some files and start messing with them when the files that you just downloaded from the website are in fact the ones that work. Then you start dilly-dallying and picking here and playing there and stuff like that. And what happens is you break it and you have nothing to go back to. In the head element of the HTML for a page that will use a plugin, code the link elements for any CSS files that are required. Oftentimes, plugins will need an additional set of CSS files, which they will provide. And usually those get added towards the end of the CSS list. <laughs> if the download for the plugin includes an images folder. Make sure you have all of those images in the right place because sometimes a plugin has images it needs to work and display, arrows and plus signs and, and various things like that. Code the HTML and the CSS for the page so it's appropriate for the plugin. If necessary, write the jQuery code that uses the method and options of that plugin. Usually you don't have to write the jQuery code itself. Sometimes the documentation might be very, very sparse, and what you'll have to do is figure out how to build the jQuery, um, the jQuery code. But most of the time, what they do is a good plugin will give you three or four examples how, how to use that plugin, and then all you have to do is change some of the values to make it do what you want. So for instance, like a slide or carousel or something like that, what will happen is you're going to have to change the, the image names or put your images where those images belong and um, change the names accordingly in, in the reference. 
Two cautions to make when using plugins, make sure that you include a script element for, J, for jQuery. So you have to have jQuery running. So whether you're using a version of jQuery loaded that's on your site or you go out to the jQuery site to pull it, some plugins won't work with the latest version of jQuery. So say what happens is you, right now I think we are using 3.11, which is the latest version has of October 2016. If you have problems, find out, look at the documentation to see which version of uh, jQuery that that plugin is expecting. Now here, notice this first line here, um, code jQuery 2.14. Here we are using and calling jQuery. Then after that is the call to the box slider min.js, which is located on your machine on the J in the JS folder. So what has happened is you've downloaded the box slider jQuery libraries and you put this file into your JS folder. And so now sometimes you can even go out and, and path, path out to it and get the most recent one and not even have it down. My recommendation is that you understand how the plugin works, get it working, understand where all the files are, read the HTML code, which pieces are, of, are being called and make sure you have those elements, those code sets in the right places for it to work. Now here is basically a standard unordered list, but notice here it says ID equals slider. So basically what you're doing to use the box slider is creating an unordered list. You're making the ID called slider and because you have implemented jQuery, implemented the jQuery um, slider code, this will now be available to start to work. And then here's the jQuery that is needed to make it happen. Notice min slides to, max slides, the slide width, the slide margin. These are settings for the box slider that you would need to make it work. So now here's the Lightbox plugin as an example. And where are we in our book? We're up to 231 now. So now if we go to our student downloads, book apps, we're in chapter seven now, and we're second at Lightbox, here's Lightbox. Notice when you get a plugin and you unload it, there's usually gonna be a sample page. You can see here that there is some pretty simple CSS. This CSS is referencing an images bullet GIF file. So that um, image, something in the images folder is needed. Maybe your images folder is called IMG. You would need to change the CSS to um, say IMG instead of images and make sure that that bullet file is there. In the JavaScript, don't worry about the DS store. That's because of a Mac, but there is the the code for Lightbox, you need to make sure you have that code uh, in the right location on your website for the Lightbox. In the image folder, notice there are some images here that are needed, the, and you have to place them in the right place. Images, so here's actually where the pictures are themselves. And what's interesting here is there is a version of the picture that is large, and there's a version of it called thumb. The thumb version, notice that the dimensions are 125 by 94. The main version is 480 by 360. So what they've done is by design, so if you were to build your own using this uh, plugin, you'd need two copies of the picture. One, you need a small one for the for the thumbnail, and then you would need a big one for the the main the main view. And then the CSS, there's some Lightbox code, and then this is all the code that is working with the jQuery code to make Lightbox happen. So when you download a plugin, open it up, look around, and start just saying, "Do I understand how it works?" Usually I click on the index page first, and then we see how that gets up and running. 
And we notice here that there is the uh, five pictures. These all look about thumbnail size. When I click on one, notice what happens. The larger picture now appears. Now I'm going to click on another one. The larger picture appears in what is known as a light box format. Notice the arrow. This is allowing us to flip through all the images in the light box or I can pull up each one individually. We've all seen web pages that look like this, but we've probably never known how to really do it and build it, put it together. If we right click and, and do a view source, that HTML is pretty, pretty small and, and light. It will be very easy to duplicate this body tag. Notice that it is basically a bunch of links and it's showing the thumbnail and there's an H reference. It's using the light box equals vector and it even has a title, data title, front, left, side. So you can add and manipulate the titles. You can see that it's using a style sheet. So you have your main style sheet and then it's adding a light box style sheet after it because the light box is then going to be kind of on top of your main. It's using jQuery code, so it needs jQuery to run. And then that um, then is adding the call to the light box itself, the, the um, additional plugin code. Again, JavaScript's on the bottom, jQuery sits on top, and now this light box code is sitting on top of that. So this is really very straightforward at how and it just works. And you can add your own images, make sure, and, and as you understand the data titles and things like that. So let's go back. Let's see, oops. If I click here, see the word front right here. That's that word front is happening from that place I showed you in the code. Left side rear so you could then easily change and add your own titles to this script as it was working so that's the lightbox plugin and that's on page 231 and here is showing us where you can actually get the most recent version of lightbox Notice we talked about the data title front and then the light box um, equaling vector. Now a box, the um, chapter seven, box slider. Again, there's a folder that has images in it. Notice that here's some images for the actual jQuery code for the box slider as well as the images themselves. The JavaScript code, jQuery box slider. Oftentimes, you uh, you would also have your own jQuery code, your your jQuery minimum in this folder as well. My guess is the HTML page on this is actually calling it out. Um, there's some CSS. I don't like the fact that it's in the same folder as the main pages. It should be in its own CSS and main CSS as well. Let's run the HTML page. Notice there's a couple arrows and there's by clicking it, now we're getting our box slider effect. There is no click reaction. It does show us how many pictures are there. We can click here, and I believe it will play automatically. There we go. There's a timer, and you can set the timer with the code. If we right click and view the page source, you can see the HTML is really basic and simple. It's an unordered list, listing the images, and there's a title that then gets displayed. The key here now is these parameters that need to be set in the um, in the jQuery code that they are providing for you. You make sure that you're calling all the right scripts in the right order. And then that's the, the jQuery code to make all this work. 
So you remember way back when we were looking at if statements, we were looking at loops and arrays and all of that other stuff, all the stuff that's under the hood. By using jQuery plugins that somebody already did that work to, we save ourselves a whole lot of work and time. And we don't need to worry about it. That's why I was telling you a couple of weeks ago, don't worry about it. And if you take a look here, if I click on JavaScript, if you take a look at the code itself, the code for the plugin is definitely pretty intense. You really don't want to be touching it. This is minimized um, jQuery code for the box slider. And let the people who wrote it support it and deal with it. If you think you can build a better mousetrap, then great. But that's definitely not the goal or the intention of this class at all. So that's the box slider. And here's and that's showing you where the box slider code is located. There's the HTML for box slider. These are the options that you would set for box slider. Cycle 2 plugin uh, used for a slideshow. So here's another um, plugin called Cycle 2. There are there's the HTML code to set that up. <laughs> Notice in the HTML code that it's setting some variables like data cycle FX, data cycle timeout, the caption, and things like that. Um, structure of a plugin. Now, this is where we get into learning how to build a plugin, and we're not going to deal with that. But I do want to come over here, and here's cycle two. There's CSS. There's images. Let's pull up the page itself. And I'm just sitting here waiting. And it's just doing a slideshow for me. And all that we needed to make that work, it's actually referencing in GitHub where that code is living. It's referencing jQuery and our main CSS. So again, using and implementing jQuery code in our websites, we don't have to be programmers. One of my favorite websites for jQuery code is www.unheap.com. There are millions, a gazillion and ten, jQuery plugins, and if you mouse over here, you can see all the topics that they have for inputs, media libraries, navigation plugins. Um, if you're looking to add some real pizzazz to your website, spend some time on unheap.com and like here, just, you know, under media galleries. There is a whole bunch of galleries that are available. And what you can do is click on one of them. They usually have demos. And you can see how the gallery works. And a lot of them now are built in such a way that they're responsive and they work really well in a mobile device. If my first place for looking for any jQuery plugin is at unheap.com. I have found most of my really cool slick widgets there. So um, spend a little more time. There's selection and vector corp. They actually walk you through making all this work. Don't kill yourself on creating jQuery plugins, but do start to understand. What I'd like you to do is actually find your own jQuery plugin and apply it to your website. So hopefully this helps. Um, chapters this week, or what is it, chapter four, is only one chapter. It's a light touch. It will allow you to get caught up in some other stuff. And more important, start getting focused on your final project for this class as well. Thank you and hope this has helped a little bit.